I used to live at Tinker's Bubble a long, long time ago, for only for about a year or two. The story is that the bulk of the land at Tinker's Bubble is lovely woodland of, of uh, plantations of Douglas fir and other um, larch and um, trees that make very good timber. When we tried to work out how to make, how to sell it, and not using fossil fuels, we had to chop them down with great big bow saws. And by the time we'd chopped down enough trees and pulled them down to the road as logs, we got a minute amount of money for a lorry load of them. So we realized we had to process the timber there somehow. I, I was just starting to get a little bit of interest in steam engines because as an old technology, I'll run on wood. So I went off and bought the engine that's there now, actually, has been running the sawmill for a couple of decades or more since then. And it's particularly good because it's got a round firebox designed for burning wood. But of course, as you know, the steam engine has collapsed. So basically the steam engine broke, uh, must be more than a year ago now. And it was the end of the day, uh, we'd finished a good day on the sawmill actually, which uh, was a rare thing at the time. And we were just cleaning out the back end, the firebox, cleaning the ash out, and noticed there's a lot of hissing going on near the tubes. And um, basically it had sprung a leak. So we started to do them, we ordered new tubes, uh, started taking the engine apart, and then uh, what happens, any work on the steam engine needs to be checked by the, the inspector and when he had a look at it it was basically not just the tubes that had started to um, rust and, and become very thin but the actual tube plate and that's actually what was leaking it was one of those sort of domino effects where we looked at one thing and then we checked another thing basically the steam engine was at the age where it needed all these things obviously a lot bigger requiring much bigger instruments than we had here so we sent it off to James Duncan we also wanted to remove it from the land, obviously without using fossil fuels. The first attempt was actually a forest. We had like 22 people, I think. We got people on a rope, we attached it to the front, and we just got everyone to pull to try and get it out of it. The main thinking there being once we get it onto the road, we can get it on the back of a low loader, get it off to the workshop in, uh, in Shaftesbury. And then, yeah, then we wave goodbye to the steam engine. It went off to the uh, James. He rang me up and he was like, "Are you sitting down? Because we're looking more like twenty grand." That steam engine being the icon of the bubble, I guess, and it was pretty unanimous. Like, no, we'll just get it, get it fixed, get mm -hmm. it back, and get it running. So, basically, we've been in the process of fundraising for the steam engine, and. Um, we had a crowd fund and we were doing a lot of stuff online and it's just been going really well and I was thinking about it and thinking kind of how can this this situation that feels like it's a lot about money at the moment become something really beneficial to Tinker's Bubble obviously apart from it being fixing something that's fundamental as a kind of keystone of our being here then came up with the idea of by hearing about promise auctions at other places that had happened of asking people who had a connection with this place to donate a promise um, and then that opened up of invitation of kind of skill share and people meeting and developing that community and strengthening that community it became really apparent quite quickly that the steam engine is really symbolically important to a lot of people it was like a representation of bubble like an emblem so come along to the event in april it's going to be a fantastic celebration of living off the land and community if you need any more information go to our website and you'll find it there thank you